All right, guys, so you're looking for suppliers. You just don't know really like where to look or how to get them. Well, uh, I hope this video can help. So um, suppliers are basically just manufacturers usually and sometimes distributors. And that means that they create the product and or store the product in a fulfillment center somewhere in the world, usually in the US. And especially with this high ticket business model, you'll want to make sure that they sell it or fulfill it within the country that you're in. Um, Specifically, usually it's the U.S. The U.S. is the biggest consumer market in the world, but if you're trying to do it somewhere else, like Canada, you can still use U.S. suppliers. Um, so uh, the way you find suppliers is just through competitors. Pretty simple. So the niche you're looking for, let's just say um, espresso machines, for example. Um, like I'm drinking a coffee right here. Espresso machines is the best example. <laughs> hmm. Who doesn't like coffee, right? Um, so the cool thing about espresso machines is that while they're manufactured, most of them are manufactured in Italy, you can actually get them uh, through distributors based in the US. So you just have to find your competitors. You have to uh, see if they have an online, uh, it, sorry, you have to make sure that they do not have a physical storefront. They're gonna have an online store, obviously, but if they have a physical storefront, then um, you definitely <clears throat> can probably extract all the suppliers from their site into a like, spreadsheet, go and find their contact info on Google, uh, and then contact them and try to find out whether they ship direct for other brands, like websites, or if they have a distributor that does it for them. So if they ship directly, then um, you can get a dealer agreement with them. Um, in order to do that, of course, you'll need to set up a website first, uh, make a separate video on that, but um, to get supplier relationships really good, <clears throat> you just got to make sure that um, you already have a website, it looks professional, and you talk to them over the phone or email them, and you just get all the information, and you make sure that you are, you know, professional in your manner of speaking to them, okay? Yeah, they're going to ask you some questions sometimes, like, what's your sales or projected sales for their brand, that kind of thing. Usually, a, you know, a small business that's online that's just kind of getting started is probably doing thirty to 50000 a month in sales. So let's just say half a million a year in sales is pretty much a good goal to have for your first year or two in business. Okay, that amount of money at an average of around a 10% profit margin, maybe more, maybe less, is going to provide you with a full-time income, and that's the point. Okay, so uh, if you want to get beyond a full-time income for yourself or be able to hire a team and scale your business, that kind of thing, then you're going to have to get beyond that revenue amount per year, which means getting beyond that thirty to 50000 per month. All right, so uh, moving beyond that, um, that's what suppliers are going to want. They're also going to want to know your marketing plan, which is usually something about Google ads, Facebook ads, email marketing, social uh, media, you know, uh, posts and whatnot, um, also the things like organic SEO. <clears throat> you can talk about media buying, you can talk about um, you know, organic outreach, uh, cold calling businesses, things like that. Um, they're interested in whatever marketing strategies you can come up with. But the main one they want to hear that you should be doing is Google ads, um, Microsoft ads, otherwise known as Bing ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, that kind of stuff. Okay? And they want to know that you're going to invest, not just sit there with a website and not sell anything. Um, so once you get the supplier, they should give you the information you need to list their products, but you'll need their pricing, the SKU numbers, um, you'll need to get pictures and videos of their products, product descriptions, um, and you know, uh, pricing includes their cost for you, the MAP price, which is minimum advertised price, and an MSRP of some sort, which is manufacturer suggested retail price. Um, if they don't have that, you can just make it up on your own. Um, and you'll want to create those listings on your website, which of course is a separate video. This is all about products from suppliers. So that's the ideal relationship is a um, supplier that has, is a manufacturer, has their own fulfillment center in the US, and you have a direct relationship with them where they'll ship it directly to your customer for you. Um, you sell it, you don't have to do the inventory. Sometimes uh, brands like manufacturers get way too big and they end up working with distributors so that they don't have to do all the drop shipping themselves. And that happens a lot. So um, a brand will tell you usually, hey, you have to call this person, talk to this distributor. Or sometimes they just work with like outside sales reps that do all this communication stuff for them, um, you know, whatever. So um, if you work with a distributor, just make sure the margins are still good. Um, some distributors will still have really good margins, some won't. And so you want to make sure when you're doing that, hey, can I look at the pricing and make sure this is going to work out. Um, and another thing to ask is really important is whether they charge shipping or not. If they charge for shipping or if they require you to create the bill of lading, since these are high ticket products, usually big products, 
um, you know, like appliances and things like that, they can cost hundreds of dollars to ship. So you have to make sure that the margins are big enough and the pricing point is high enough to uh, allow room for shipping costs because you're gonna want to offer free shipping on your website. You don't want to charge your customers for shipping. Even if um, you, know, you have to, you can just wanna raise your sale price. You don't wanna charge extra for shipping. Free shipping is like the standard online these days. So make sure you do that. But uh, suppliers will definitely um, sometimes charge shipping and you have to make sure that there's enough margin for that. And the way I usually make sure of that is if the product price point is $1,000, $15 or up, um, and the margin is at least 20 to 30 percent. That means you're working with at least five to hundred to a thousand dollars, hopefully in margin, and that will give you room to pay for you know a few hundred dollars in shipping costs and still have margin to work with to pay for ad costs and your team and pay for yourself and uh, merchant processing fee things like that. So that's usually how it goes, guys. Um, pretty simple stuff, not too complicated, but. Um, people I think really uh, don't understand the process of finding suppliers. It's just really simple. You look at your niche on Google Shopping, you find your competitors, you see if they have an online storefront or not, or sorry, a physical storefront or not. If they do not have a physical storefront or a warehouse where they're stocking the products, then their suppliers are dropshipping for them and you can extract them, the, the brand names from the website to your like spreadsheet or something and then find their contact info on Google and then from there, contact that supplier and get that account. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, again, from there, there's all sorts of stuff to deal with, like are, do they offer good margins? Um, are they gonna ship out in time? Some suppliers are built to order products only. They're not even gonna have products that are you know, uh, in stock ready to ship. And um, for me, anyways, I don't advertise or pay for advertising on products that are built to order because lead times are usually too long. It's like three to six weeks or longer. And um, that means it's basically like a back order and that customer within that time frame can still cancel. Even if you have a cancellation fee on their website, they can, uh, and oftentimes will, file a chargeback um, just claim they didn't get the product yet and the bank will always side with them. So it's a risky thing to do paid advertising for um, you know, built to order products. And you can have all the policies you want in place but you're still liable for that. So it's up to you whether you wanna take that risk or not. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, sometimes it's worth it. You just have to do a lot of communication with your customer. That's the key thing is communicating with them all the time. And with high ticket, of course, you want to make sure it's not fraud, so you always got to check on that. Um, for fraud, I usually do like a reverse lookup. I just make sure that that person is associated with their contact info. Um, yeah, so let's see what else. With suppliers, you're going to have a lot of other things to deal with. Um, you know, communication from suppliers is key, whether they email back right away or have a, a, someone you can talk to on the phone. That's really important. Um, you know, obviously when you get the first order shipped out, does it go smoothly? How fast do they ship? Um, does it arrive uh, clean? Do they communicate well? Um, what shipping companies do they use? And if you run into any problems along the way, like for instance, maybe a supplier has inventory issues all the time, um, you might want to consider just dropping them because what's the point of advertising products if they're not even in stock and they can't ship, you just have to cancel orders. Um, if they have uh, profit issues, like if the shipping costs are just too high, then you might want to consider only selling their products that are over a certain dollar amount where the margin is high enough to support shipping costs. Um, if they have warranty issues, the products always show up but then like don't work, you're going to get chargebacks. That's not worth selling. Um, if there's shipping damage issues, then they need to do better with packaging. And if they're not going to do that, then it's probably a good idea to drop them because you're taking the risk. As a high-ticket dropshipper, you are taking the risk. So you've got to be very careful with this stuff. Um, if the product shows up and it's messed up and they file, they file a chargeback, um, you could be out all that money that the sale is for and then also the money you paid the supplier for that product for if the customer does not return the product. And I've had it happen to me. So um, high ticket, which is high profit, but also high risk. So you just have to manage the risk properly. Okay. <clears throat> That's pretty much it, guys. So if you have any questions specifically, um, I'd like to make more videos about this. Um, I just need you to leave a comment below and ask those questions so that I know what to make videos about in the future. Um, if you are interested in taking a up on my um, course and coaching and services, I have everything listed at ecommerceparadise.com. I have a high ticket job to be masterclass, a free niches list, a free mini course for beginners. I also have a um, turnkey done for you service as well as a private coaching offer as well and some other stuff. So go check it out, ecommerceparadise.com and start a conversation with me. You can email me directly at trevor at ecommerceparadise.com. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.